Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is going to be a beginner's video again and this one's going to be about Arduino pins. So to start with, pins are the uh, little metal pieces which are on your Arduino, these here, um, and they're like solid wires which stick out of it. And with these pins you can do lots of different things. You can use them as ports um, and sometimes other things as well. So to be able to read data into and out from your Arduino. So in this video I'm going to go over how you can use these pins and what you can use them for. The first thing you'll need to do is, um, is find a diagram which represents your Arduino because they're all different. So there's the Nano, there's the Arduino Pro Mini and there are others. Each one is different um, but only slightly different. The principles stay the same. Um, so I think I'll start. To start with the easiest ones are the, the ones that are labelled red and black on here. So we have V in, ground, 5V, 3V3 and another ground. Well, V in is the input to the Arduino in order to power it. It's usually 5 volts. Um, as a side point, sometimes some boards have a raw pin as well. So there would be another pin here, raw. If you have a raw pin, um, that's where you can power the board from unregulated power or in other words you could give the Arduino more than 5 volts slightly more than 5 volts and expect the Arduino to regulate itself and then um, pass the regulated voltage to the chip so raw and V in 5 volts that's a power source to a device so you could take 5 volts of power from the chip in order to power a 5 volt device 3v3 that means 3.3 volts and that's the same as this one here you can use that to power 3.3 volt devices ground and ground of course are to finish the circuit now you can see these reset pins here usually the way these work is if you get this pin here and connect that to ground and then take it back off the whole chip will reset and of course that one's the same the next ones, I'll go through the ADC ones next. So ADC is analog to digital converter. And let's say you have some sensors and the sensors can provide a whole array of um, different values. Let's say you want to read in a value from zero to five volts. It could be anything, it could be 1.1 volts, it could be 2.6 volts, it could be 3.333 volts or anything. And um, traditionally, if you want to read that into a microcontroller, it just won't work. It will either read high or low, 0 volts or 5 volts, usually whichever is closest. So that's why we have these ADC pins. These ADC pins can take any voltage from 0 to 5, and it converts it into a number from 0 to 1023. Well, usually it does anyway. And then you can get that number from in the software and uh, do whatever you want with it. So you'll have a number from 0 to 1023, which is a proportion of a 0 to 5 volts. So I can explain more on that in another video, but that's what that is anyway. A ref, it means reference, um, to reference a voltage to the, um, to the ADC pins. Again, more on that in another video. Next ones we'll go to are int 0 and int 1. Int 0 and int 1 are interrupt pins. And the way this works is that if you connect a device or something to these pins, the device can output a voltage to the Arduino from 0 to 5 volts. And when that voltage changes, this Arduino here can be told that something has happened. It can basically trigger an event. And the int 0 and int 1 pins um, trigger an event on high voltage low voltage, rising voltage, or lowering voltage. And each of those four things can trigger an event to the chip, and therefore your code can, um, can make sense of that and do something about it. So they may be useful for very, very fast, uh, high precision sketches or programs. When you can see here, uh, PC int 13, 12, 11, 10, they are the same as these ones, they are also interrupt pins, but they're not quite as useful. Um, 
no, I say they're not quite as useful. They can't detect rising and lowering, rising and falling. They can't detect rising and falling edges. They only detect when something's gone high to low or low to high. And they, of course, trigger, trigger an event when they recognise that that's happened. The next one I'll go into is um, Serial. So we have the TXD and RXD here. These are serial pins. So the way this works is you can connect a device to the TXD pin and usually you'd connect the RXD to this TXD of this pin and you'd connect this RXD to the TXD of another, another device. And um, this pin basically transmits serial data and this pin receives serial data. And again, in your sketches you can make use of that. So still on communication, well, serial. Um, next one I'll go to is this one. You can see here you've got SS, MOSI and MISO and um, SCK. SCK stands for serial clock. And um, this can be used with SS, MOSI and MISO. And the protocol that that provides is called SPI, which is Serial Preferal Interface. And of course, that's to uh, interface the different preferals. And um, SCK keeps timing the same across different devices. MISO is a line for master in and slave out. So you'd connect master in slave out to um, the master in slave out port of another device. And it basically means that this, if this is master, it uses that line to output data. MOSI is master out and slave in, which means, um, sorry, I've mixed that around there, master in and slave out here. So this is the pin that receives the data. And MOSI, master out, slave in, is the pin which the master here transmits data using the SPI um, protocol. SS is in the SPI protocol too. And that stands for slave select. Um, and the way the protocol works is that you can select different devices who you want to talk to at a given time. So when this transmits data, it knows which slave is the one that's going to be communicating on the other side of the uh, connection. Again, more on that another time. The next one is SCL and SDA, which are also serial uh, ports. Um, this is for a protocol called I squared C, and it's one that I don't really use that much. I tend to use SPI and uh, serial, uh, standard serial. So that's another one, and um, yeah, it's not really one I use much, but it's similar to SPI. And um, the rest, majority of the other pins are digital pins, which means that they can transmit or receive high or low signals. In other words, they can transmit or receive either 0 or 5 volts, um, and that only. And one last thing is, you can see that some of them have a squiggle here. That squiggle means PWM, and PWM is pulse width modulation. And it's basically a way of emulating um, something called a DAC, which is a digital to analog converter, and it's a way of um, getting the microcontroller to try and output an analog voltage. So, where the um, controller can usually output 5 volts and then it goes straight down to 0 volts, you can try and create a different wave, and the way it does that is. Um, probably out of the scope of this video but basically um, if you just know for now that that's a way to get the Arduino to output varying voltages from 0 to 5 volts um, that should be sufficient for this video. So there we go so that's a very quick overview of different ports and uh, what they're used for on the Arduino. So I hope you liked the video and I hope it was useful and um, thank you for watching. Bye.